Um, so anyway, we're going to talk about something that's totally not video game related. Also, I have a slamming head cold. Um, out of all the years I've been going to cons, the only two times I've ever gotten sick were once previous at DEF CON, I went to like a Vietnamese place and apparently um, it tried to kill me. Um, and I spent the entire weekend at the Alexis Park on the bed, which is not, um, say what you will about the rib, but being the AP in bed all weekend really sucked. Um, and now I have a head cold. So this is Logan. He will be uh, assisting uh, Howdy. Howdy as needed. Um, and maybe we'll be dragging other people on stage here too. This may turn into a giant dance of random people. First of all, that really is the title of the talk, not a statement about what we needed to do to the title. Um, so people asked, because they're like, it looks like they screwed up your title and they didn't have the final one in there. I'm like, no, really, that's the fucking title. <laughs> Apparently it's the worst title ever. And, and I assume nobody was actually going to be here for this talk, so I think you're all in the wrong room. Um, you're probably looking for the Android talk. I think it's in track one. Um, oh, that's goons in the hallway talking. Do they leave the doors open the entire time now? Yep. Wow, that's awesome. How, how lucky for you in the back. If you want to have a separate conversation in the back of the room, you are welcome to do it because we won't hear you up here. Um, also, just to be clear, Logan, when he joined the Schmoo group, did not choose his handle. He refused to come up with a name for himself, so we chose one for him. Uh, just to be clear, it's l pronounced Lolo, but it's actually L0L0 because it's really difficult to tell on screen. So if you want to send him an email, that's how you get a hold of him. That's why it's always a good idea to pick a handle. Yeah, you always, always, always want to pick your own handle. When they give an option, what do you want the username to be? You pick the fucking username, okay? You don't let them decide because it will be like, you know, the worst thing imaginable. That's actually not that bad. It doesn't involve expletives or any discussion of the sexual prowess. Um, today is the trade deadline in, what, 50 minutes, an hour? for MLB for like the eight Major League Baseball fans that attend DEF CON. Not a large overlap. Oh, they're, they're, they're all in here, actually, it turns out. All, all eight baseball fans. If someone could tell me if Adam Dunn gets traded, I am the one Nationals fan in the country. So, <laughs> me, I buy, if you go to the Nationals website, it's actually personalized. Hey, Bruce, welcome back. <laughs> we really appreciate if you bought a couple thousand more season tickets. Um, anyway. Hasn't yet, thank you. I'm pretty, if we get like a ticker going, if you want to hack this VGA monitor and put a ticker on the bottom, like has Adam Dunn been traded? Does this talk suck? Um, first things first, what's the only thing you should believe? Nothing. Nothing. Well, source code. Who said source code? Yeah, bingo. That's exactly what I was going for. Holy shit. Like, congratulations, sir. You get a gold star. Woohoo! Come on now. Woohoo! There we go. Thank you. It's really easy to get people to yell at DEF CON. Um, so the first thing you shouldn't believe is the speakers. Um, and, and usually that's my opening slide, and I'm just still going to say it verbally. Um, years and years and years ago, I remember coming to DEF CON, and I was really excited about the partying, and the partying was pretty good. But some of the talks kind of sucked. Um, and even when I went to other conferences that were more expensive and uh, a couple days before DEF CON, and <laughs> I would go to those conferences and people would get up on stage and they would say shit like one and one is three and like reporters would then report on the fact that one and one is now three because some random asshole on stage said it. You're like, oh, that's amazingly stupid. So I encourage you when you come to DEF CON, you know, this is an industry filled with cynical people and we get paid to be cynical and we get paid not to believe what people are telling us and what computers tell us. So when you walk into here and you stand in line, don't check your brain at the door, you know, continue to think. Uh, this project that we're going to show today is the results of uh, many late nights in the last two weeks. <laughs> proper DEF CON form, um, but it's really just kind of our view of the world. And if you disagree, feel free to stand up. Uh, we'll even, I'll arm you with microphones if you want to be that guy and hijack it. I mean, we can go that. We can play that game because we're pretty good at doing that too. So we can hijack our own talk back. Um, anyway, so what do we do here? Um, what we really felt like doing with this uh, project was trying to dig through source code and not look at the code at all. Um, and what we really wanted to look at was the metadata associated with the code, and primarily comments associated with the code and the commit statements. Okay, I mean, for how many people in here are software developers? Yay! How many people in here are software developers that don't suck? Okay, you all lie. We've all enraged at the end of a long night of coding, checked in something like, "This is the biggest ass hattery ever." Fuck you and fuck your mother. Fuck this, I'm done. Fuck, 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 fuck. Shift ZZ out. <laughs> right? 
we, we've all done it. And so, you know, there's, honestly, I've been curious about this for a long time of, of you know, what do people, what do other people write? Because I know that's what I write. Like, I write stuff and commit statements just to see if anyone reads them. Um, I put things in things, it was actually uh, in one of the, the Shrew Group internal lists, um, like years ago I was doing a project and I put something way down in some documentation. I'm like, if anyone ever reads this, post to the list, Purple Monkey Robot Chicken. And like two years later, someone just like posted a one-liner. It's like purple monkey robot chicken. I'm like, son of a bitch! Like, <laughs> holy crap, you read it. Um, how many people have done that? Like, random. Uh, no one ever reads this. I don't know why the hell I even try. Yeah, right. Um, so what we wanted to do is go through and look for, uh, first of all, just amusement factor. You know, we're going to build a ginormous database and spend hundreds of hours doing this just for amusement. But also, uh, because we think there's actually security specific information where people say things like, hey, we need to go back and fix this later because it's a big vulnerability, dot, dot, dot. You know, did that code ever get checked again? You know, did that ever get modified? I don't know. Let's go find out. Um, and so the purpose of this project was really to um, provide an analytical tool to allow us to do that kind of analysis, to find where people have said things in the metadata associated with code, um, you know, we plan on going back and doing this or this is a problem, and using that to do stack analysis. Because it turns out that real stack analysis is hard, and we didn't want to do anything difficult. Um, but as we'll talk about later, it turns out Turbo Gears is almost as difficult to stack analysis of source code. So, but, uh, but apparently no one's actually trying to use Turbo Gears in here. Um, there are a bunch of stack analysis tools out there that look at source code, that do a good job. There's a bunch of different philosophies on how to look at source code, and that totally wasn't our point. You know, we weren't trying to go actually look at the code itself. Um, we figured we're just going to let the developers tell us what's wrong. And honestly, there are a number of instances where they just outright say, hey, this is a vulnerability. You know, oh, thank you. <laughs> Sweet. I can use grep. Um, also, there's some pretty seriously funny shit. So, um, the first thing we're going to do is have a primer on, on, on uh, code repositories. But then I realized when I wrote the, word, wrote the word primer on a slide, everyone would say, what the fuck's a primer? Because I always say primer. The primer is the shit that you put on the walls before you paint. <laughs> right? A primer, if you want to be like all OED about this, is actually this description of elementary issues for a given topic kind of concept. This is, hey, you don't know anything about this? Let me give you a primer. Let me give you the little bits of information you need to understand it. Okay? Probably the best example of that is Jody Foster in Contact, um, which I happen to have right here. Now let's see if I can do this. Boop. How long will it take to decode it? Oh, it could take forever. Well, we really need a primer up. This we really need to get heat. the best decryption people we have. She is the world's most famous linguist, so I recommend we follow her lead. Uh, anyway, so honestly, um, that's just one of those, if you can't tell, I have little rants I get into for those that maybe see me talk, and the primer thing was one that kind of bugged me for a long time. And plus, Jody Foster, like I said, taxi driver. Taxi driver fans? Yeah, woohoo. What a great fucking movie that was for a wide variety of reasons. Uh, anyway, back to the repositories. Um, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you in just a second. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, mostly because I'm going to curl up underneath the table and take a nap. Uh, there are three major uh, repository suites as far as we're concerned uh, CVS, uh, Subversion, and Git. They're all pretty different. What's interesting is Git is really easy to use. Um, like, it's one of those, it's, uh, I, I equate it to the Church of Python. Uh, you know, when you use Python, like you read the Python documentation and like the python.org webpage is like, this is the best uh, programming language ever, that's all you ever need to know. That's it. <laughs> There's nothing else on the page. Um, at least that's the way it's portrayed by people that write Python. I mean, it is a hell of a language. I didn't believe it for years. And then the first time I wrote something in Python, I kind of squatted over the toilet and popped out some Python. I was like, oh, hey, it worked. Cool. Even there's database integration in there. Um, and Git was kind of the same way. Like, I mean, I, I'm a really bad developer. Um, I think the actual pinnacle of my development uh, patheticness was we were writing some uh, code for one of the Shmoo um, projects we were doing years ago, and I sent it to another Shmoo, and I'm like, man, I keep having these weird error conditions where sometimes it just doesn't work. Like, it just kind of cores and flakes out. I really don't know what's going on. And the guy could, writes me back and says, you know, you declared a function inside a conditional. So. Sometimes the function just didn't exist. And I'm like, oh, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> so I dropped out of college when I was a CS major. Um, took data structures and algorithms three times. 
Um, I shit you not, failed all three times. Um, so um, Subversion and CVS is about like rocket science to me, so I was really happy that we could use something like Git, because you can just Git clone and you get the entire freaking repository, like since the dawn of time, and then Git log and get all the logs associated with all the commit statements. Really easy. Um, so we focused on those. If you if you believe there to be others, like there's probably some RCS people still left in the room. Oh, big gray beards on them. They got stuff in them. Um, you're welcome to debate the finer points of code uh, repositories, but we focused on the ones that we were comfortable with. Um, and really, just to be clear, because I really wanted to do some PowerPoint graphics. You have Python and Git, and they are the awesome. <laughs> what are those on top? Crowns. Thank you. I'm glad. I worked on that on the airplane flying here, and people were looking at me, like walking by, like, that guy's making porn, I think. <laughs> like, 8 bit porn. The next slide, they start going at it, but I won't show you that. Um, here, I'm going to turn it over to Logan now. You want to chat? Yeah. Yay! I get to sit down. All right. Take the mic. There you go. I think you gave this to me earlier. Whatever. You, you don't want to hold the mic? No. No, just hands in your pockets. Hands in my pockets. All right, we're on. That's, that's the way I roll. I'm going to be a complete jerk to him, so if you want to help out, just say stuff. All right, so uh, that slide is mostly true. Actually, we <laughs> only crawled GitHub. Uh, yeah, pretty much it. Uh, the primar primarily, the, the languages we saw were Python, Ruby, and uh, C and C++. A little so, bit of pro. So just to be clear, when you when you submit a talk to a conference, most conferences, they require the slides in advance for some reason. Um, I think it's more actually to hold people accountable to actually determine that they've actually done some work. Uh, they claim it's to burn it to the CD, but has anyone looked at the DEF CON CD yet? Yeah. Really? Is your box owned? <laughs> no, not, not that you know of. Um, but we had to make these forward-looking statements a month ago uh, about what we had done, quote unquote. Um, it was really more what we thought we would do. And so we put in things like, oh, we're going to go get all of GitHub and SourceForge and then any other repository we can find. And as Logan pointed out, we, we, we focused on GitHub because we were lazy. All right, so the name of the app that we put together is called CodeGleam. Bruce had some jokes lined up for that, I'm not sure. I, don't, I, I didn't actually. The first, the first thing he had was source scrape, which sounded like a disease that you needed um, <laughs> penicillin for, and CodeGleam was a moderate step up. So I give it two stars. You can dance to it, but the beat's a little off. All right, so it's still a prototype, alpha, beta, whatever you want to call it, but it's not ready for production. Uh, mostly used in-house by us to do analysis. There are five parts of it. Uh, like Bruce said, Python is great, so we use Python. Uh, the first part is the crawler. That is basically uh, just their piece that goes out and will crawl GitHub right now on, uh, and look for repos that we tell it to look for and, and pull that down. Uh, it does support Subversion, but other pieces of CodeGleam don't support Subversion, so we didn't actually crawl any of those yet. Um, once, it, once the uh, crawler is done, it pushes off the, a task to the file store. File store essentially stores the uh, repository on disk. So this is uh, semi-complicated because, as it turns out, um, OSs don't like large directory structures that are flat. Uh, it makes functions like stat really, really, really slow. So what we did to counteract that, and uh, based on some input from some other people, and as I found out later, this is actually how Git stores its data too. Um, we hash each file in the in the repository, and then store a um, create a directory structure based on that hash, and store the file store the actual file at the bottom of that hash, and create a symlink pointing to that file. So it essentially creates a nice tree structure that the OS actually can handle in large amounts with large amounts of files. All right, and then the parser comes in. The parser basically, its entire function is to parse the uh, code for comments and commit statements. The whole goal of this, right? Um, to do this, we created a, essentially a base parser that is capable of, uh, that uses a, a library called PyVCS. PyVCS is a nice little uh, library module, or Python module that will, uh, abstract interfaces to uh, certain Subversion repositories like Git, Subversion, Mercurial, and Bizarre. Hey, look, there's other. Yeah, there's other ones. Yeah. I've never heard of the other two. Like, holy shit. Um, you made those up. 
Maybe. Anyone use Bizarre? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone use Mercurial? Yeah. Anyone know Mercurial? The guy on Twitter? <laughs>